In this Unreal Editor for Fortnite tutorial episode, requested by Zwar, we'll show you how to make custom collisions in and out of UEFN for 3D objects such as walls, props, and building elements. Collision is a vital part of any game, and if collision is incorrect or missing, it could leave players confused or frustrated, which may result in a poor experience of your island. And while Unreal's Generate Missing Collision and Auto Simplified Collision will work in some cases, oftentimes you'll need a more accurate or custom form of collision. To demonstrate this, we'll use various props and assets to represent when to use various types of collision. What is collision? For those unfamiliar, collision are simplified meshes that prevents objects in your world from intersecting. Without collision, the player would be able to walk through walls and assets. Collision is also instrumental as a part of an asset you want the player to interact with or gather resources from. You can see the collision for your assets in one of two ways. First, with the viewport, click the Show dropdown, then find and select Collision. Alternatively, you can use the hotkeys Alt-C to show and hide collision in your viewport. The second method is double-click the mode's thumbnail, which will bring up our asset window. In our asset window, click the Show drop-down, then select Simple Collision. Let's start by adding collision to our wall asset. For a simple linear object like this, we can easily add a simple shape collision. The top three options in the collision menu surround your static mesh with a simple collision shape, which is then used as the bounds of what can and cannot be blocked or overlapped with your mesh. If you want to delete the current collision, you can do this by going to Collision, then find and select Remove Collision. For the wall, we can simply use the Box Simplified Collision. Next, let's add collision to our doorway. If we add a Box Simplified Collision like we did to our wall, we can see the collision now blocks the player from entering the doorway. In order to fix this, we'll need to modify our collision. We can do that by selecting it and using our standard transform tools. We can also duplicate our collision the same way we would duplicate objects in our scene. By placing colliders on each side and the top of our doorway, the player can now go through the doorway and it has collision. Using the simple collision mesh you set up in the last section, will work fine for a static mesh that can easily fit into a capsule or box or a static mesh where having precise collision does not matter. However, you may have a static mesh with a more complex shape requiring a precise collision. Since the shape of a sphere, capsule, or box won't correctly fit our asset, we'll need to use the KDOP simplified collision generators. KDOP is a type of bounding volume which stands for K Discrete Oriented Polytope, where K is the number of axis aligned planes. Basically, it takes K axis aligned planes and pushes them as close to the static mesh as possible, then uses the resulting shape as the collision hull. In the static mesh editor, K can be 10, a box with four edges beveled, 18, a box with all edges beveled, or 26, a box with all edges and corners beveled. In cases where both the simplified collision shapes and the KDOP simplified collision generators still aren't achieving the proper shape of your asset, like for our asset, you'll need to instead use Convex Collision. To do this, select Auto Convex Collision from the Collision drop-down menu. The Convex Decomposition panel should now appear in the Details panel. In the Convex Decomposition panel, you have three settings. Hull count which determines the number of primitives to represent the collision mesh. Max hull verts, which increases or decreases the number of vertices your collision mesh has. And hull precision, which represents the number of voxels to use when generating the collision mesh. The higher these values, the more precise your collision mesh will be, but also the more complex. Clicking apply applies these settings to your static mesh and makes the collision mesh visible. Keep in mind, you always want your collision to be as simple as possible. The more complex the collision, the more taxing it is on your map and your player's performance. So ideally, you should slowly increase the values until you get the desired results.
In some cases, when it comes to assets like stairs, assets with curved shapes and openings like archways, or more complex shapes, simplified K-dot or convex collisions won't give the proper results. In cases like this, you'll need to open or import the asset to a 3D modeling program like Blender, Maya, or 3D Max, and set up your collision there. Then export your model with collision to UEFN. To do this, open or import your model into a 3D modeling program. For this example, we're using Maya, but this method works the same no matter what 3D modeling program you use. Next, create primitive shapes that will represent your collision. You can use a single or multiple meshes depending on the complexity of your mesh or how much collision you'll need. For models with curved or round shapes with a gap or hole in between, it's best to break the curve up into simpler primitives opposed to using one shape. The reason for this is, in most cases, Unreal will try to fill in the empty space between the curves. Once you've created your collision, you'll need to rename it with the prefix of UCX, underscore, followed by the name of the model. If you're using multiple collision meshes for one model, you'll also need to add the suffix of underscore, then a numerical value. The prefix of UCX tells Unreal that the mesh is a convex collision object. We find it's best to parent or group our collision meshes to our base object. However, this is simply an organizational practice and doesn't affect how Unreal reads the collision. Along with the UCX prefix, there are also three other prefixes you can use depending on the shape of your collision. The three additional types are UBX for box collision, UCP for capsule collision, and USP for spherical collision. However, we find using the prefix UCX for all of our collisions makes naming and organizing our collisions much faster, since convex collisions can also be in the form of a box, sphere, or capsule. With our collision complete and named, select your base object and collision and export it as a FBX file. If we now drag our new file into Unreal, or select Re-Import if our file is already imported, then go to the Asset Editor window and show Simple Collision. We can see our asset now has the collision we created in our modeling software. Be sure to subscribe to never miss out on our weekly top 10 Fortnite user-created maps, the latest Unreal and UEFN content, and our Gaming vs. series. And if you have any questions or suggestions for future tutorials or would simply like to share your map to inspire the rest of the community, don't hesitate to leave a comment below. But whatever you do, always remember, don't just play, create.